All right. Uh, so this lecture will cover functions. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so far we've seen a lot of different functions um, in the classes prior to this. We've seen the combine function, class, filter, all of these functions are acting on some variables that we give it. But we can also create our own functions. Um, this is useful if we you know, have something really specific that we wanna do. Um, so we can make functions just like the ones we've been using. So why would we want to do that? Creating your own functions can, first of all, it can cut down on repetitive code. So if you are doing the same thing multiple, multiple times, you know, you've got three lines of data that you're using or three lines of code that you're using over and over again, you can condense that down into a function. And so you're not actually having to copy and paste. This also makes things easier to fix because if your code suddenly stops working, you don't have to correct it everywhere. You only have to correct it once. One thing functions are also nice for is organizing code into manageable chunks. So maybe you want to have a function that runs your analysis and another that is doing your plotting or another that is doing some summary statistics. So you can break them down in a way that makes sense to you. One thing I really like it for is it allows you to avoid running code unintentionally. So if you're running through your whole markdown document, if you've got your code stored in a function, it's not going to be run unless you explicitly tell, you know, I'm calling this function up and I want it to do something. And lastly, Functions allow you to use names that make sense to you. So if you've got several steps and they really resonates with you that it's some kind of filtering and processing step and you want to call it something spe uh, specific to you, um, you can select any name you want. Okay, so let's start off with a few simple examples. So here we're going to go ahead and write a function that returns the second element of some vector that we're interested in. So the first thing we'll need to write when we're doing a function is whatever we want to call that function. So this is the new name of the function that we're writing. It's return to A. We'll do an assignment, an equal sign. And then we have this, uh, this command function. And you'll see we have this letter X inside here. And so this X is a stand-in for some argument we're going to have when we use the function later. So this X is, is our stand-in for specifically for a vector. And that vector could be anything because we want it to be multi-purpose. So that, that vector could be, you know, it could be 10 numbers long, it could be a hundred, could be anything. And so after function, we follow that by a space. And we have the real meat of our function here. This is what's actually happening under the hood. So we have that, again, that stand-in argument that's going to represent our vector later. And we're pulling out the second element from it. Okay, so this is actually the action being performed by the function here. If we go ahead and run this, we'll find that there's no output, but actually that makes our function ready to use, sort of like loading a library when we've been uh, loading a tidyverse and, and other packages. Okay, and when we go ahead and, you know, we're ready to use our function, we just use the function name like we would any other, and we'll have parentheses on the outside. And then in the inside, we can specify what we actually want that vector to be. Remember I said the X was a stand-in, um, just kind of waiting for that argument there. And so you say, okay, X equals, and you give it the vector that you want to you know, have used in the action that you specified earlier. So this case, it's returning us the number four and we can prove it to ourselves. Okay, four was the second element of this vector. 
Okay, so maybe sometimes we'll have functions that span, you know, they're, they're a little longer, there's more going on, and we can't fit it on one line. So adding the curly brackets can actually allow us to use functions spanning multiple lines. The only thing that I've changed here is, is really the name of the function, and then I've added these curly brackets right after function and kind of at the bottom of the action that I'm having that function perform. So get the same output as the previous function. All it's doing is breaking this x uh, index two to a new line. We may also find that there's multiple steps going on in our function and we want something specific for the output. And if we wanna do that, we can use the return command. So, you know, we're taking some steps here um, and we want only one variable to be returned by the function, okay? So the, the x index two, that is the same. I'm reassigning it to this variable output. And then I'm just saying, okay, I want return, I want to return that variable output. Okay, so this is really just the same, looks, does the same actions as the function we had previously. But I've added another step of assigning it to a name and then returning that named um, output. Okay, so again, same output as before. Okay, just to review the syntax for your, you know, typical function is the function name followed by an equal sign. And then this function command, your input, these curly brackets, the actual action that your function is doing on those inputs, and then returning some value, could be a vector, could be a data frame, could be a number, you know, like a mean or something. Um, that could be anything. So functions can actually take more than one input. So maybe you want users to select which element to extract. In this case, you know, I've named the function once again. Uh, I take this function command. And then, so I don't just have X inside here. I have a comma, and then I have another argument that I'm adding. So when I take that argument to the action of the function, you know, I can actually arrange them however I want. This n is representing the stand-in for the, which element I want to extract. I want that to be something that I, you know, I have the option to change. So in this case, uh, our vector that we're providing this function stays the same, but now we're providing this argument n, and let's say, okay, we want the third element. And so, we get the output five. If we look over at our vector, okay, the fifth element or the third element rather is five. So it seems to be working, okay. Okay, functions can have default arguments and this is really convenient. You know, if you think, okay, well, most of the time I use this function, the argument will be you know, one, for example, but on a rare occasion, I maybe want it to be two or something else. And so the defaults allow us, can also allow us to use the function without uh, the argument later. Okay, so it, it cuts down on some work. So in that case, all I'm changing is the stuff inside these parentheses following function. And so instead of just X comma N, like we saw before, I'm now saying, okay, well, X is equal to, you know, I can have it be whatever I want, but by default, it's going to be equal to this, this, uh, this particular vector. And uh, by default, I want N to be equal to the second element. Okay, and, you know, the action is the same, but then, look, I don't have to actually provide anything when I run the function. So I haven't even provided any arguments. Um, and it automatically knows, okay, well, here's X, you know, and I automatically want the second element, which is this one right here. And so it's returning the correct number without even providing anything in our line of code.
Okay, so let's take a moment and do a little bit of hands-on coding. Okay, so we're gonna write a function sqdiff that does a couple of things. So let's just do it step-by-step. Step. Okay, so the function name always goes on, you know, it's the first thing that you write. And we're going to put an equal sign. So the next thing should be function. You should see something pop up. R knows you, you're, uh, you're trying to do something there. Okay, so I've got my uh, inside of the function and that's where my arguments go. And so it, the function should take two numbers, X and Y. Okay, and the default values, gotta look really quick with those two and three for X and Y. Okay, so I've provided the defaults. And so what is actually happening with this function? So it's gonna take the difference. All right, so take the difference between X and Y and it's gonna square this difference. So let's uh, put these in parentheses just so R doesn't do things a little out of order. Okay, and then it's going to return that final value. This isn't a really complicated function, so we don't actually need the return. Okay, so this means that now uh, sqdiff is stored and ready for me to use. No output, just uh, something to, you know, it's ready to be used. And let's go ahead and see what happens if we run some, uh, some options here. So let's say X, oh, and it, and the nice thing is when you've made a new function, our studio provides you a little preview, you know, what, what are the defaults? Like what kind of arguments do I need for this function? And so let's do X is equal to a hundred and Y is equal to 400. Oops, let's have a space just so it looks nice. Okay, so it's performing, you know, some actions and, you know, maybe this is 100 also. Okay. And let's do just the function with no arguments. Remember we provided those defaults so we can do that. All right, and we get output just like we expect. Okay, and here's a little output if you wanna look at it later. Okay, so let's try another one. So let's try to write a function top that takes a tibble and returns the first n rows and columns with the default value of n equals five. Okay, so this might be useful for like taking previews of lots of different tibbles that you have. Okay, so let's say uh, the function's called top. So we need that on the left-hand side. And again, we want that function command. All right, and let's, so we're going to have it take in a data frame. So I'm just going to call that argument df, okay? And there's no default data frame. I don't even have any data yet. So I'm just going to leave that as is. And we want it to return the first n rows and columns, okay? So we need to give it an argument n, and the default is five. Okay, so then what's actually happening in this function? Um, I'm gonna take the data frame itself and I'll use the brackets to kind of pull out different um, indices of the rows and columns. And so in this case, I wanna pull the first one through N rows and columns. And so that could look something like one through N for the rows and same thing with the columns one through N. Okay, so our function is saved. Um, and if we go ahead and get started, you know, we see we have this function top saved. It gives us the information, but I actually don't have any data. So let's really quickly load in some bike data. Okay, 
we're sort of been playing around with this one and are familiar with it. Um, but let's go ahead and use that top function, like I said. So the data frame equals bike. And I don't need to worry about n because it had a default value. Okay, so I get the first five columns and first five rows of bike. And you'll notice that you can do a little shorthand if you wanna just say bike, it knows that first argument is df. So I can just do this too. Should give me the same thing. Okay, and there's output again, if you wanna look at it. Okay, and so there's also other ways to use functions in R. Um, for example, in the, um, with apply, uh, you can use the function s apply to basically, it's a little uh, circular, but it s applies a function that's applying another function. Okay, so these functions take the form, you know, s apply over here, and then some object that you want another function to be applied to, and you specify that function here. So I'm going to apply basically some function to this right here, okay? Okay, and so this is what that looks like. So let's say I'm using S apply and I'm working on the bike data set and I wanna apply to every column that I have, I wanna apply the class function. And so note that this has no parentheses here. This is pretty much the only time that you'd use the function without the parentheses. I think S apply knows to look for that. Okay, so, and we can see that that happened with, you know, we didn't have to type very much and we got a lot of information uh, because that function is working on, on uh, multiple parts of bike. And let's say, you know, maybe we wanna take a column from bike and we want to apply the log function, the log E, um, to every variable in there, uh, we can use the S apply to do that. And so um, there are other ways to write this that maybe seem a little less confusing, but for more complicated um, examples, and some, sometimes you do need to do functions on the fly uh, that S apply, and um, there's also a sister one, L apply, um, that can be really helpful. All right, and that concludes functions.